Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here, talking about January the 13th of the year 2021, a significant biblical date. And in this class, we're going to show you how the Bible points to that date. Now, I'm actually going to cover this subject in two parts, in two videos, doing them a little bit different, where in the second video, Lord willing, I plan to concentrate more on the connection in that date. January 13th, 2022 could very well be that rapture date that people have been looking for. So I'll touch on more of that in the second video. I'll only briefly mention it in this video. But what I want to focus more on in this video is the date itself and how we calculated that exact date. Now, I ask that you go ahead and hit that like button in case you forget by the time we get to the end of the video. Be prepared to leave a comment. But if you would, go ahead and get your scripture out. Get your pencil and your paper out because you're going to want to follow along in the scripture as we point out how we come up with this January 13th, 2022 date. Now, our primary text for this video will be coming out of Daniel chapter 12. Um, we'll come back to verse 1 um, as we talk about the rapture here. But what we want to do is come down to about verse 11, where it starts talking about these dates here. And this is how we're going to make this connection between what Daniel is being told here in chapter 12 and January 13th of the year 2022. All right. So let's get started. Verse 11 says, and from the time that the daily sacrifice shall be taken away and the abomination that maketh desolate set up, there shall be a thousand two hundred and ninety days. OK, now there's a lot to unpack in this verse right here. So let's start from the beginning. First of all, it's giving us a timing here. It's saying from the time that the daily sacrifice shall be taken away. So the first thing we need to understand is what is this daily sacrifice? This is creating a lot of confusion in the church these days because the Protestant church, like the Catholic churches, don't really believe in sacrifices. And since they don't spend so much time in the Old Testament, they're not really familiar with the rules of the Old Testament when it comes to the daily meat offering, which went along with the continual burnt offering. So per the biblical instructions, these people were making sacrifices every day as part of the temple service. So this is that daily sacrifice being talked about by this angel that's given Daniel this information. Now, it's not hard to see. Protestants, Catholics, Muslims, anybody who cares to look will have a hard time finding anybody doing daily sacrifices these days. It's because that daily sacrifice has been taken away and it is yet still gone. And if you look further, you find over in the book called Malachi, the last book in the Old Testament in chapter three and about verse three and four that these sacrifices are coming back. The father says he's going to start with the Levites, the firstborns, those who he put in charge of the temple services will be those in the end times that start this daily sacrifice again. But we're still waiting on that time to come. In the meantime, we do know that the daily sacrifice is gone. So when was it taken away? Now, you have to understand how the Bible is written. Remember that verse that says precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little, there a little. To understand these prophecies, you're really going to have to jump all over the scripture. But like we said, you'll want to have your pencil and your paper out so we can write down these verses to help prove these dates. And one of the first verses that we'll write down is over in the first chapter of the book of Daniel, where it tells us when these daily sacrifices were taken away. You see, verse one says in the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, came Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, unto Jerusalem and besieged it. So here is that story that we read about over in first Kings, I think in the last chapter of first Kings, where this Nebuchadnezzar comes in, takes away all of the gold and the silver used to make the daily sacrifice. Jehoiakim actually gave it to him. And then this Nebuchadnezzar went on to burn down the temple altogether. So what we are learning here in the first chapter of Daniel is when this all took place. It says in verse two, and the Lord gave Jehoiakim, king of Judah, into his hand 
with part of the vessels of the house of God, which he carried into the land of Shinar to the house of his God. And he brought the vessels into the treasure house of his God. So here is the daily sacrifice right here. These vessels of gold, these were all of the golden goblets used for the wine offerings and the meat offerings and such. Well, Nebuchadnezzar put them in his temple with his gods and his grandson, Belteshar or something like that, decided to drink out of those golden goblets at one of his parties and that's when he saw the handwriting on the wall letting him know that his kingdom would be destroyed. So the first answer to this puzzle of when the daily sacrifice was taken away that was in the third year of the reign of King Jehoiakim. Now here is where I have to identify my own fault. You know I don't really like talking about dates because I'm not a prophet. I'm just a guy who reads the Bible a lot. And so I can make errors. And last year I actually did make an error about this same time because I used information from the internet instead of using information from the Bible. Let me show you what I mean. When we read about Jehoiakim on the Wikipedia website, you see that it says that his reign started in 609. Now, this is not the only source I used, but this was the date, 609, that I used to make the calculation based on what we read in Daniel. And I came up with January of the year 2021. And me being quite upset that that date came and left with no significant manifestation. I trying to figure out what happened, why that date didn't turn out to be right. I found out that there is some discrepancies in the date of the beginning of the reign of Jehoiakim. You see here on aboutbibleprophecy.com, as it's talking about Jehoiakim, king of Judah, it says that his reign started in 608 instead of 609. So what year is it? Well, don't make the same mistake I made using the internet for this information when the Bible actually provides this information for us. Using the dates of the progenitors that we find in Genesis chapter 5 and chapter 11, as well as the dates of the kings that we find in the Chronicles and the books of the kings, we can actually see exactly when Jehoiakim, king of Judah, took his reign. Now, I offer you guys this so you can double check for yourself. That's the beauty of this scripture is that anything I'm telling you here, you should be able to prove it with your own Bible. So you have the verses here that give the scripture from which I took these dates. For instance, how Adam was 130 years old when he begat Seth and Seth was 105 when he begat Enos. You can find all of that in Genesis chapter 5. Now, you have to jump over to the book of Jasher in chapter 5 to find out when Noah begat Shem at 502 years old. But then you could come back to Genesis chapter 11 and get information all the way up to Nahor. Then you'll go back to Jasher chapter 7 to find out when Abraham was born. Then using Genesis and Exodus, we could find out the dates of the covenant given to Abraham. And then Jubilees chapter 50 gives us the date of the Exodus from Egypt. First Kings gives us the date of the first temple and Solomon's reign. And then using Second Chronicles, we can find all of the successor kings all the way down to Jehoiakim, which we read about in Second Chronicles in chapter 36. So, with all of this information that the Bible provides, we can verify that the date of Jehoiakim's reign was in fact 608 BC, not 609. But I can see how they came up with 609 because you see this 0.75 here? That actually points to January. But you have to understand that the sacred calendar starts in about March or April. So there's a discrepancy in the year. So whereas according to the Gregorian calendar or the man-made calendar, it was the year 609 because it was in January. But according to the sacred calendar, it was actually in the latter part of 608 with only a few months left to go before the end of the year. So, like I said, I wanted to give you guys 
proof and information that you can use to come up with these dates for yourself. As far as the beginning of this timeline that Daniel was talking about, you could use this table in order to have proof that it starts in the year 608. But you remember over in the book of Daniel in chapter one, it says that the daily sacrifice was taken away in the third year of his reign, which would be 605 BC. 605 would have been the year that the daily sacrifice was taken away. Then we can come to the book of Ezekiel chapter 24 and found out the exact date of that daily sacrifice being taken away. You see there in verse one that it occurred on the 10th day of the 10th month. You see in verse two where it says, the son of man write thee the name of the day, even this same day, the king of Babylon set itself against Jerusalem this same day. How many times is he gonna tell us that it's this same day? Well, this is important because what he's telling us is the exact date of the 10th day of the month. He wants us to remember the 10th day of the 10th month, I believe is so that we can know the exact date of the start of this prophecy that Daniel was speaking of in verse 11. But now looking back here, what Daniel is being told is from the time that the daily sacrifice is taken away until they build or set up the abomination of desolation would be 1,290 days. Now, we have to understand that our father's time is not as our time. Our father lives on a higher dimension. Time is actually a third dimensional element, meaning that once we leave this third dimension, go on to those higher mansions, time will no longer exist for us. If you understand E equals MC squared, that should make sense to you because as our mass goes to zero, we are able to travel at the speed of light and anything traveling at the speed of light doesn't recognize time at all. But we'll save that for the engineering part of this lesson. But I'm not going to force you to accept that when Daniel was talking about these 1,290 days that he was actually talking about 1,290 years, I'm actually going to just prove it to you and show you the abomination that maketh desolate. So we come to a simple calculator and we'll put in 605 or negative 605 because we're talking about BC and then we're going to add 1,290 years. But we have to be really careful because there was no year zero. So we have to add an additional year to account for the missing year zero. And we end up in the year 686 AD, AD 686. So we're looking for this abomination that was set up in the year 686 AD. And what we find is that that was the year that they put the dome of the rock or a cap over top of the foundation stone. This most important place on the earth, even in this article, it says that the Jewish people believe that this is where the world began altogether. But we do know that this was the place that Jacob had his dream, Jacob's ladder. He laid his head upon this particular rock when he had that dream. And we know that this is where Abraham was about to sacrifice Isaac and some other very significant events took place on or about this mountain where this rock exists. Well, in 686, they actually put a cap on it. The Muslims, the Catholics, whoever came in, pushed all of the Jews away, built a cap over this foundation stone and forbade any Jews or anyone like them to even approach this stone. The most important place on the earth has now been capped and there are armed guards out front to make sure that the believers never get in close enough to this rock. Now, let's come over to Matthew chapter 24 because our Messiah actually talked on this abomination of desolation in verse 15, telling the people when they saw this abomination of desolation, spoken of by Daniel the prophet, the exact one we've been speaking on, he told them to leave that place, to go into the mountains, to flee and to never look back. For like he says in verse 21, then shall be a great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world at this time, nor ever shall be. So what the Messiah is telling us there is that with the sighting of this abomination of desolation in 686, we know that this great tribulation would actually start. Now, 
again, I have to speak on my Catholic and Protestant brothers who have a hard time understanding this because they don't really recognize the troubles that are being spoken of here. When they think of tribulation, they think of their future tribulation, not necessarily thinking of the tribulation that the Jews or spiritual Israel have been in since 686. You gotta remember over that time, you know, they took the calendar, they changed the laws, there was the Holocaust involved in that, there was the American slavery involved in that. There's a lot of things that went on that point to this greatest trouble, things that the Father's people really hadn't experienced in all of their existence now seem to all be compounding on them in these latter times from 686. But hold on, we come back to Daniel chapter 12 and verse 12. It says, blessed is he that waiteth and cometh to the thousand three hundred and five and thirty days. So here it is talking about this abomination of desolation, starting this trouble in verse 11. But Daniel has been given the time in which this trouble will last. And then in verse 12, he says, blessed is he who makes it to this end, to the end of this trouble. That's what the Messiah was saying back in Matthew 24 and verse 13 when he says, but he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. So somehow this blessing has something to do with our salvation. Now that should be the first hint that this has something to do with the rapture. So let's speak on it just for a second. Like I said, I want to cover this connection between the these trumpets or the rapture as they call it and this particular date here but let's just touch on it for a second looking at first Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 16 it says for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first so there's key words that we have to focus in on here because these keys are what will help us to understand when this event is talked in about in other places like in Joel chapter 2 and stuff like that it says the same thing but let's look here at archangel and trump of God this is the same thing that we read about over in first Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 52 it's talking about the same thing when it says in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed now, we did a class on this not too long ago as the Father revealed to us these trumpets. Um, it's actually referred to over in the Third Testament of the Bible, chapter 55. Down there in about verse 97, we hear what these trumpets are. It's giving us more detail than Paul did. Let me just read verse 97. He says, And that will be the hour when the sublimity of the conscious, the vibrating echo of the trumpet, will be heard, announcing from the beyond, that the kingdom of life and peace shall come to men of goodwill. So these trumpets, this is another area that people have a lot of problems with, mainly because we're not understanding where these trumpets are coming from. We see here that these trumpets are sounding from our conscious, whereas many of us are expecting to hear the material sound of a trumpet. You know, people reporting hearing trumpet sounds all over the internet and such, but no, the real trumpet sounds vibrates from our conscious this should be confirmed to you when you read verse 98 which says and before the voice of that trumpet the dead in spirit will rise weeping tears of repentance and the father shall receive them like the prodigal son worn out from the long journey and fatigued from the great struggle and seal their spirits bestowing upon them the kiss of love so you see here this seal right this should remind you of the book of Revelation in chapter 7. This is all talking about the same thing. I don't want to get too far off track here, but let me show you over in the book of Jeremiah chapter 31 in the Septuagint translation. Now, you know, the Septuagint predates the King James Version of the Bible by almost 2,000 years. And it says something a little bit different here in the book of Jeremiah chapter 31 and verse 8 where it's saying that our father would gather 
his people. Let me just read it. It says, Behold, I will gather them from the north and will gather them from the end of the earth to the feast of Passover. And the people shall beget a great multitude and they shall return hither. Now, this great multitude, that should remind you of what you read over in the book of Revelation when it's saying this multitude of people that no man can number. Well, look closely right here where it says that he will gather them from the ends of the earth. We're going to see that over in Matthew 24, but note here how it says to the feast of Passover. So this vibrating echo of the trumpet will be heard by those who are keeping the feast of Passover. And this is important. I always try to, you know, give you guys some hope or at least some instruction on what we're supposed to be doing. If we want to be on the right side of these events, we're going to have to keep the feast days. Even the book of second Esdras in chapter two says arise and stand behold the number of those that be sealed in the feast of the lord now there's that word again seal we are sealed at the lord's feast now those who don't keep the lord's feast my protestant brothers and my catholic brothers don't keep the lord's feast so they have a hard time understanding this but they'll come around we just have to continue to share this information with them on how important it is for us to be keeping these feast days this is when we get our seal and then Jeremiah saying that he's gathering us from the ends of the earth to the feast of Passover. This is what we're reading over in Matthew chapter 24 and verse 31, where he says, And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. So look at all of these words just being used here and how we saw those same words over there in the other book. It says he will send his angel. I mean, the other scripture said archangel. Then he says with the sound of a great trumpet. The other scripture said trumpet. And then we see that they will gather his elect from the four winds. Well, we see those same words over here. We got the trumpet being talked about in 1 Corinthians, as well as the dead and Christ being raised. We see that here, like we saw over in the third testament. We're going to see that in the book of Daniel too. And then up here in 1 Thessalonians, we see the shout with the voice of the archangel. That's the same thing that Matthew chapter 24 said. And then down here we see where it says, and the dead in Christ shall rise first, which is exactly what the third testament said. All of these scriptures go together. And then when we come to the book of Daniel chapter 12 and verse one, we see that it is all related to this timeline given to Daniel. You see, verse one says, and at that time shall Michael stand up. The great prince will stand up for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation, even to that same time. And at that time, thy people shall be delivered. Every one that shall be found written in the book of life. So here is your archangel here. This is Michael who is standing up for the children of thy people. But then notice down here, he's saying the same thing that the Messiah said, and there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation. And then the Messiah said in verse 21, it says, for then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. So since there can only be one greatest trouble of all times, this is making the connection between Matthew chapter 24 and Daniel chapter 12. But like I said, we'll cover this more in a future video. So make sure you're subscribed. What we're concentrating again on is down here in this timing in this video, because he's telling us that this blessing, whatever this blessing is, is to occur 1,335 years after the abomination of desolation was set up. So when we come back to our calculator and add 1,335 years, we end up in the year 2021. But wait, let's not make that error that we talked about earlier. Remember that the biblical calendar and the sacred calendar are actually different by a few months. So when we come up with the year 2021, we have to refer back to the sacred calendar because as we read over here in Ezekiel that this date that we were asked to remember the same date was the 10th day of the 10th month and the 10th day of the 10th month brings us to january the 13th of the year 2022 that's that day they call asari asara bitevet or the fast of the 10th month 
That's the day that they fast for the destruction of the temple. Well, according to what we read in Daniel, that could be the very day that the third temple is constructed. But we'll talk about more of that in the other videos as we get into a little bit of conjecture. I just wanted to give the facts about this date in this video. Um, if you have any questions or concerns or if you see anything I need to tweak or correct anything, put them in the comment section of this video. Um, it's important that we get this right. We're not prideful about this information at all. It comes from your Bible just like it comes from mine. So nobody can take responsibility for this. And so there's really no room for pride. Accuracy is what we're going for. So let's have a collaborative effort on this as we approach this date, January the 13th of the year 2022. Again, I'm not a prophet. I showed you the scripture where I got this from. If your Bible says something different, just let me know. Let me know in the comment section. We'll talk about it. In the meantime, let's brace ourselves around the Lord and his scripture in preparation of this date, not knowing what exactly is going to happen. Will January the 13th be the last Trump? Father knows for sure, but I believe he wants us to know too. So we give him all praise and honor for his word. And with that, I'm going to say Shalom.